Let's go. Your boy today, and today is Tuesday, the 16th day of August 2022. I pray that you do not have to go through hardships, but if they do come, well, they have to be endured, and that's why we are discussing enduring hardships today. And we are taking a text from the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians in chapter 6. We'll be reading from the first verse, so let's go very quickly. Walking together with him then, we entreat you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at the acceptable time, I have listened to you and helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. For as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, tumults, labors, watching, hunger, by purity, knowledge, forbearance, kindness, the Holy Spirit's genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God the weapon of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and in good repute. We are treated as impositors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. You need to understand the context, the situation in which Paul the Apostle was when he wrote this. I've mentioned it quite a number of times in the past few days because we've been dealing with the second uh, epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, and I must have told you, if you're hearing for the first time, that he wrote the epistle shortly after he left. Uh, he had just he had written the first epistle to them, and uh, because he was no more with the people, all kinds of rumors were flying around about his not being true. Uh, part of the rumors were that, in fact, he's uh, dead. Uh, there were other rumors, but there were realities of the fact that he had also been through some of the tribulations that he had taken earlier Christians through. That was a time when Christians were being beaten, tortured, murdered, killed anyhow, and, well, jailed, persecuted in one way or the other. But what he was saying is that all these hardships must be endured by the people and that he himself was enduring some of those hardships he had been through some yet others in fact on certain times were always awaiting him but he was ready to bear all the hardship because he had a personal experience with jesus christ and he knew his calling and he stood by that calling so it is for us christians of today to also understand our calling are you sincere with the calling that is upon you if you do have it at all and do you have that much faith so that you can withstand all the hardship that may be coming your way today is it not in certain countries even mine that people will go into a church like it happened in Owo, Undo state nigeria and people were just killed anyhow 
Is it not in six different countries of the world, including my own country, that people will be lined up in villages and it will be asked of them, are you a Christian? And once uh, anyone said he was a Christian, he will be shot. Not only in Nigeria, in other parts of Africa. This is not new. You need to remember the stories of the African fathers, the, the, the leaders of faith in times of old. There were those that also withstood the persecutions, although there were those that others will refer to as the traditors or the traitors or the ones that um, betrayed their faith. Now, what is it that you would do today? I still remember the story of Leah Sharibo. I don't know. In fact, because of so many other calamities that have taken place after that of Leah Sharibo, I am not sure many people still remember that case of that young lady who stood by her faith and declared that she was a Christian. And every other person who either genuinely was of another faith or pretended to be of another faith was released. But this girl was held on to until today we are still not sure what situation or circumstance she is in. That's enduring hardship. And that is what Paul the Apostle is saying that Christians must be able to do. Of course, we pray that you will not have to go through such hardships. We pray that hardships will be far from you. We pray that the situation around you would um, be better, would improve. We do not want the banditry that is all over Nigeria right now. We do not want the arm robbery. We do not want people being kidnapped from trains and being in custody of evil people for upwards of 100 days and going through all kinds of persecutions. The women being raped, the men being tortured, and the government seemingly doing nothing about it. Well, nobody wants to end your hardship, but that is not enough excuse for you to reject the faith, to deny the faith. We pray that the Lord will arise in a new dimension and put all of this persecution to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that the Lord will arise and not only in those ones that we have discussed, there are other hardships. There are domestic hardships. Hardships in your place of work, in um, your environment within your family that people may put you through in, in schools from senior students to junior students. I pray that the Lord will give you the grace to be able to endure the hardships so that you can be an overcomer and there can be testimonies flowing forth, forth from the victory that the Lord will lead you to have in the mighty name of Jesus. For you to have that victory, you have to be in the Lord. You have to be a Christian. You have to give your life to Christ. And so I'm inviting you right now to give your life to Christ and all you need to do is just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Yes, I do not want hardships, but I pray if I need to go through any, give me the grace to pass through it. But most importantly, let me know you. Let me have the power of your Holy Spirit within me. So forgive me of all the sins of my past and from today. Take me as one of yours, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, welcome to the fold of Christ. And I pray for you that you have the grace to always end your hardships. Right now, you need to find a Bible-believing church close to you so that you can grow in the faith. I always recommend an Anglican church. And if you happen to be in Oshubo, Oshun State, Nigeria, come straight to the Anglican church or Oroki Estate Extension. You'll find that along the Oyeko and Gokyomi Bodum Drive of the Oroki Estate Extension in Oshubo. Come to the Chapel Hall of the Olive Branches Middle and High School. You can meet us every Wednesday for the midweek services, 5 o'clock in the late afternoon. And on Sundays, you can meet us 10 o'clock in the morning for the regular matins or the Holy Communion services. As you go out today now, say this prayer quickly. Say, O oh Lord, keep me strong and focused in the face of adversity and distress. Enable me to see you in times of trouble and grant me victory over them all, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go out today. I pray that you will not have to endure hardships, but if you have to, the grace of the Lord will be more than sufficient for you. God bless you. I judge you faithful. I call you faithful. 
I call you 